So you're going to be able to get glass out of the furnace using a punty rod or a blowpipe. So I just want to show you guys just a couple of versions of that. So when you're starting, you're probably going to be using a um, basic punty, a small uh, half inch punty rod. This is a solid stainless steel rod uh, that is about four and a half feet long. And uh, you know, you just want to have a nice good balance to it, nice good weight to it. Hopefully they're straight and that'll keep you from running into issues. But here's a couple different uh, types of punties. You can see this is a, a three quarter rod here. Now being a thicker material, uh, there's actually a hollow body to this and a solid head. So there's about a, a weld line up here somewhere, probably right there. So this is all solid for the first like six inches or so. Then back here all the way through the handle is hollow so that it's a little lighter and it's not as uh, tiring on your wrists when you're working pieces for a long time. So I also have a couple of blow pipes here. This is a smaller, uh, what we call a cup pipe. So these pipes are uh, a little more than your half inch. It's probably a five eighths um, thickness on the body of the blow pipe. And uh, it is hollow all the way through uh, with a slightly flared head at the top. So again, same thing with the putty rod. There is a head that's welded on here. and It's got a slight taper outwards, which allows you to get a little bit more glass than you would if it was the same diameter as the rest of the pipe. So uh, here's another blow pipe example. Now this one is a little bit heavier. It's more of what we call a workhorse, a standard workhorse pipe. So this size pipe is really great for about two gathers, three gathers max. To start getting more than two or three gathers, you're gonna run into problems turning the pipe comfortably. You're gonna get exhausted a lot faster is going to fall off center quicker. So um, something to think about while you're turning the pipe is if you have a large piece, you have a small pipe, you have to turn more times to get that large piece all the way around in order to work it even. That's why pipes like this size and cup pipe are great for small projects. You know, if you're doing uh, a simple like a tumbler or a shot glass or you know a pipe glass or a small vase, um, something like that. So don't overdo it with the amount of glass that you gather on pipes of honeys this size. Make sure you have the right size tool for the right project, okay? So something to think about uh, to properly uh, work with these blow pipes or punties is safety. Real quick, just want you guys to think about uh, something. You, if you reach too far up the pipe, it's definitely gonna get hot. You're gonna burn your hand. So you can see where the pipe is shiny, where your hands are always on it. So your hands are usually right here in the middle area, a lot. Um, you know, you're rarely up here. You're, you're only up here if the pipe's cold. So you can see where the heat has affected the pipe over time. And it's definitely, uh, definitely got a darker tone to it towards the top of the pipe where the glass is. So just be aware that while you're walking around holding the pipe or the punty rod, you want to have your hands about shoulder width apart. You want to have knuckles down here, knuckles up here. That makes it a lot easier to control. Um, if you're walking around doing this, it's a lot harder to turn the pipe evenly and control it. And it's much easier to drop the pipe, which will result in a bent pipe, which will result in somebody being very angry at you. So we want to avoid that, for sure. So uh, same thing on the punties. You can see where they're shinier and where they're darker. So hopefully you guys have a pipe cooler in your shop and you're safe on that and uh, you can avoid getting any burns on your hands, okay? Okay, so another common tool that we use all the time at our bench is uh, shears. So there's a couple different types of shears that you can use for different purposes. So the ones that you're gonna use a lot are diamond shears. You can see they have a little diamond cut area and a little notch here to grab onto uh, punties or blow pipes. We 
also have trim shears, which come in various sizes. These are great for uh, cutting lips, trimming lips of vessels, or cutting into patterns. And another one is duckbill shears. You can kind of tell why they're made like a duckbill. So these are also great for trimming. Uh, these are nice, you look at the way that they're shaped. When you're trimming a lip, uh, you actually are cutting it. And as you cut, the glass is being pushed away by the tool, which is great because it prevents it from curling back and sticking to the shoulder of your vessel, which is something you definitely want to avoid. You don't quite get that with these. When you're trimming a lip with these, you have to have an assistant kind of making sure that there's a paddle or a tweezer here to pull the glass away from that and preventing it from sticking back onto the shoulder. So one thing that um, you may have seen me doing with all these is the way that I pick them up, I've got my index finger out. So I want to make sure that my index finger is out on all of these. And you're kind of pulling with your uh, fingers here and pushing gently here in order to get a nice tight cut. So, um, but it's very awkward. A lot of people when they're first learning this, they don't know how to pick this up and they don't really understand quite the comfortable way to hold this. This feels very awkward, like it's gonna fall out of my hand. But if you kind of hook your index finger on the outside of this grip on the side, it, it's much easier to kind of hold the tool in place and you get a much wider grip. Now granted, I've got very large hands, but, um, but if you have smaller hands, this will still help you. So if you're thinking about buying some diamond shears, they come in different sizes, uh, and you can get smaller uh, size uh, grips for smaller hands. So make sure that you're really thinking about that when you do buy this tool. So, because uh, you don't want to be able to only open that far, you want to be able to open it as wide as possible to get around a blow pipe or a bit of glass or a putty rod. Um, but you don't want to be, you don't want to be limited by the size of the tool. Okay. So I want to show you guys a quick exercise on getting used to using the diamond shears. So this will get you used to cutting quickly and cutting hot and holding the tool properly. So I'm just going to gather a little bit of clear glass and then just trim off little bits over and over just to kind of show you something to get your hand used to the movement that you need for this tool. Okay, so let's see how 
how these trim shears cut. Okay? So we want to just kind of cut it in the glass. You get a nice spread on there. This is something really fun to do with just a little frit pattern. You can see how I'm kind of changing the angle of my hand. So I have to turn and adjust each time. So I just gotta pause and cut. So if you try to cut while it's turning, you're actually twisting the glass. So give yourself a second to find a fresh spot. If you want to do something like this, just remember you're still cutting fresh every time. You go back to cut a part that's already been cut, the tool has chilled it, and it will be a little harder to cut. Um, and possibly in time it will dull the tool that you cut for a while. really exciting it's fun it's, it's an extension of your hand it's a really great way to feel how the glass is moving uh, how soft it is a person how, how hard it gets after it's cooled off but uh, people tend to overdo it and pull the glass onto the punty rod or the blow pipe when they're playing with their color so something to really think about is uh, just be aware if you pull all that glass onto the pipe it could become waste so your effort and all the fun you're having just gets thrown away. So you have to make sure that you're really working that material off the pipe. So I'm going to show you guys uh, what people commonly do when they're learning to use the tweezers for the first time and then how to fix that. So before I get in to show you guys that little twist move I was just talking about, I want to let you know I'm going to use the middle set of tweezers. These are flatter, they're a little beefier. They have a bit more tightness to the uh, tension in the tool. So I'm going to make sure to use these uh, so I can get a little more work time in without the tips heating up and sticking to the glass. All right, 
right, so let's say I've got some cool color on here. I'm making a paperweight. I'm about to do a cup. Uh, but I got all my color melted on. So again, I'm going to use a little gravity to kind of let the glass hang off the money a little bit. You're going to see it moving quite a bit. But I want to get some twists on there. I want to maybe feather it or something. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to work this glass. I'm so excited work in this area back here and yeah really just messing with it so now if you look at it all that glass is all the way on the pipe you can see the head of the pipe is right there it's about a quarter inch away from the surface of the glass right here where the tweezers are so I need to work this glass back off the pipe so I'm gonna take this to the glory hall get a little bit heated to it and use the thicker part of the tweezers to kind of push it back off. So the cool thing about this is you may have manipulated the color, got some fun twists in it. That's still going to be there. It's still going to look really cool at the end. So don't worry about messing up this very loose pattern. Uh, but worry about making sure you have some material to present in your final piece that has all that color and you just worked into the clear glass. So I'm just going to very uh, gently take the tool that I'm going to use, the, uh, the flatter part here, I'm just going to push the glass a little bit gently off the punty rod. So now you can see where the pipe is in the glass and all my cool fun color stuff is now off the punty and ready for the next step. Okay, so we've talked about tools, how to use them, uh, the proper way to hold them, what they're for. One thing that you should do before you start your uh, session is make sure that your tools are cleaned up and ready to go. So I like to make sure that the diamond shears and the tweezers and the trip shears are all cleaned of wax. You can do this uh, before or after. Maybe you're ready to clean your tools all the time. Maybe they're tools that sit out for a while and they get a little waxy from people using them. So you just want to make sure that uh, those tools don't have wax in them. The best way to do that uh, is to just gather some glass out of the furnace and run the tool uh, over the hot glass until you see that it stops uh, a little, little smoke on there from the wax burning off. So let's do that real quick. don't need a lot of glass, just a little bit of glass on the front I'm just going to take these tweezers really quick and I'm just going to turn them and twist them a couple times. You can see a little bit of smoke coming off there for some extra wax on there. So those are cleaned up. I'm going to take my diamond shears I'm just going to cut a couple times, maybe rub the inside of the tool to make sure that any of the wax is off that cut area so it doesn't slide around glass cools off pretty quickly so I'm going to get it hot again to clean the next tool. I'm going to take my trim shears. It's really important not to have wax on these. Because, man, you will get frustrated if you're going to cut a piece of glass and it just keeps sliding. So again, just kind of rubbing the tool there. And on this guy. So as the glass gets colder, don't try to force a cut. Just rubbing against the hot glass is usually enough to get some of the wax off. If you want to take it a step further, you could always have a, a rag around and just kind of wipe off any re residual uh, wax that's kind of heated up on your tool. Also, kind of keeping your, your front of your work area clear of wax. Uh, you know, keeping the tool that does have wax on it, jacks, blades kind of going towards the back 
so that any wax that does end up back here is away from the tools that you don't want to get slippery. So, with that in mind, these do need wax. So I'm gonna heat these up in the glory hole really quick. So I just get the, just get the, the tips of the jacks a couple inches into the glory hole for a few seconds. They're already smoking. Got a little bit of beeswax here. I'm just gonna do a little sip sip. And then let that wax drip off. So you may be wondering, why does this tool need wax? Well, these uh, ride on the glass to create that line, that jag line that we talked about. So if you don't have wax on the tool, it's going to make a squeaking noise. It's going to stick to the glass because it's getting hot. So the wax acts as a lubricant. So you have to put wax on here pretty regularly throughout the whole process of working glass. So just keep that in mind.